this meeting of the Policy Subcommittee to order. We are going to start with Policy KCD, which is Public Gifts to the Schools, and this was submitted by the MASC. Um, and basically it looks like, I think we already do this, Jeff, don't we? We do this. Yeah. We, we, I, I don't know anybody who doesn't get the school committee to approve those gifts. Yeah. So In any district I've been in, so I don't well, somebody did with that. Yeah, clearly, yes, somebody, somebody did it. Yeah. Somebody accepted something. Yeah, that they, that they yeah, didn't like, okay. Yeah, I'm sure that's what no. this is. But yeah, this is what we do. Yeah, because I don't see anything on here that I was like, that's the first thing I thought was, who do this? I mean, it, with the exception of title, like the entitlement, I say Title I and 2A, which we get every year. So, so now it's saying that all grants and gifts to the district, so would that be... But that might be different, though. Are the grants ones that we... If we get any grants besides the entitlement grant, so yep. if they do any, if we do any kind of competitive work, then we, we, well, we tell you about it, but I don't know if you vote on it, but we always, I believe we do get a vote on those. The entitlement grants we get every year. So right, so there's no don't. voting on so, that, yeah. Because yeah, so yeah, you're entitled to right. that. Right, so yeah. those are the things we get every single year. Okay. So, um, and we do tell you what the expenditures are because they show up in the budget. Yep. Why? They should show up in the budget when we, when like Bob used to give that sheet and had all of the grants where they were expended. Right. All of the entitlement ones. And then the other ones you know about because you voted on somewhere along the line. And guess without question. Well, yeah, we always do that. You always yeah. do that. So, so going forward with the grants, will we have to now vote on those, I guess? If they're not the entitlement ones? You know, it doesn't, yeah. I suppose. I mean, the entitlement ones you won't have. I'm sure you could if you wanted, but those are the ones we get every year. Um, it should I ask? Should I, should I reach out to the MASC and ask if for every single grant we have to besides entitlement? Ask. I would. You could ask. It says all grants. Yeah. Ask if it's just it's the entitlement ones. Too. Okay. Because those are the only ones really that okay. we don't we don't talk to you about. We do, but not not right. beforehand. Right. Well, because they're budgeted. Do you have any questions or anything to add, Mike? No, um, only that this says the school committee can decide, regardless of the donor's intent, what to spend it on. So like if somebody donates money for some program, music, sports, art, whatever it is, mm -hmm. it says here the committee can Where choose. Are you oh, it's the it's red. A third paragraph there. Oh. It's kind of that box. I, don't know what I know. I was trying to get it out of the school committee, kept separate from the general fund. Um, that's the uh, spend it at the discretion of the committee, as provided by law. It says uh, they they added regardless of donor intent. Oh, yeah. Intended oh. by the donor for specific. Uh, regardless of donor. Unless they're crossing that out. The original one. Yeah, that box makes it really okay, so I'm not gonna it to the, the current one says the same thing, just says it a little differently. Any gift, whether or not intended by the donor for a specific purpose, will be accepted by both school committee and as a separate account and expended at the discretion of the committee. So all of that's done right now except the expended at the discretion of the committee. I, I right. don't think any committee doesn't I don't I have never seen where a committee like I'm a donor and I say I wanted to go to this in the committee saying, yeah. no, we want to do that. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Because you'll only yeah. get it one year, probably. According to the policy, <laughs> it can be done that way. Can, can, oh, but yeah. it's not really good practice. Yeah. I don't think we've done that. I don't think we've done it, yeah. I've, done it. I've, not, I've not, never uh, seen it. Yeah, that. I've never seen it done before we've been here. That's, um, that's the only thing I have, is whether or not we want to keep that in. I think it's probably safe to keep it in there. But just be aware of it. Yeah, well, in case there's any... Yeah, but I pretty much we respect whatever the donor, so long as it's reasonable. Yeah. To me. All right. So. Okay. So let's see. Next we have uh, policy KHA. This one is oh the public solicitations in the schools. Right? Yeah, this is for review. Um, so it was brought to our attention that they was a, it was a jump start for Hart or yeah there was a fundraiser was, this came up last year too yep. uh, the former chair decided not to do anything about it but it's come up again from some parents um, 
there's a fundraiser done in the schools, mm -hmm. I think, first grade. And, uh, is, is it the whole school? It used to be the I don't whole know school. if it's the whole school or not. Yeah. Um, but it was an outside organization that the mm -hmm. kids were raising funds for them. Yeah, so I think and it's I, a National Heart Association. Yeah, and, yeah. and what they get, like, some prizes or something. Yeah. It wasn't clear whether or not I should have gone through this process or not. So uh, I think they asked us to take a look at this and well, see whether or not it's appropriate. To me, so I remember asking um, Attorney DePere about someone had something up in a, in a classroom and I just, it came to, to our attention, I just said, are you allowed to put this up or not? Is there a, a policy on this? And he said, if you allow one thing, it opens the door for everything else. So you have to, it's a really slippery slope. He said, when considering anything, always consider, if you allow this, then it sets precedent for other things. Um, and, you know, while I think a lot of people like the American Heart Association, <coughs> it's a nice organization, I'm sure other people have different opinions, I think the idea is, if we're allowing them to do it, it's in defiance of this particular policy, and it also opens the door to why aren't we doing it for, say, the American Cancer Society or something else. Well, yeah. it also may be, and I don't, I'm not sure what the exact incident you're talking about, but it just may be that they, they didn't approach us. It could be they didn't approach the school, and that they would have. No, the, yeah, they had it. No, no, and it was no, incomplete. It was, oh, you mean it was the, done through the school. You're talking about, the, you're talking about the, the fundraiser or the other issue that I was talking about? The, the other issue. The other, oh yeah, it was just a question, it was just a question and it turned out that, yeah, they had it, no one had, no one was aware of it and it wasn't, it wasn't an issue, that you, nobody had an issue with it, it was more of like a going forward, how would you approach this kind of thing? See, I, I think, that, so the general rule that we've always used is if nonprofits mm -hmm. approach us and they want to do a fundraiser and we do it. It's the direct solicitation of profit groups to come in and they want to talk to kids directly. and Because that's things they want to do. They want to talk to kids. They want to sell. They want to give them something, but then, then they want to sell something. Oh, and you know, so they might want to come in. Like I've had them when I was a building industry. They want to come in and they want to help talk to the, all the senior clients. Mm -hmm. Right? It's like, what? Why? Why? Is it? You know, if it's if it's like the heart association or something like that, then then you know you gotta figure out the intent of these stuff. So if they're trying to sell something, then then you don't do it because that's a direct solicitation. And I think that's been forever. I don't think yeah. as far as I know. Yeah, that's number one here. Number two is no general or class distribution of commercial or fundraising literature may take place without school committee permission. Yeah. Well, we never do that anyway. We would never. I think this. I think the point that this person was making was that this did go against that. So I'm not sure. So I guess there was. Some what What was the What was it? I don't know. What was, was the issue with what 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 commercial group? The Kids Heart Challenge was run at BES. So whatever that is. Right. So maybe uh, maybe the principals can just get a reminder that this policy exists. Yeah. So, what sh should we say going forward prior to having something like this? It would need to come to the committee for approval. That's what the policy says. That's what I thought. Okay. For for commercial, for commercial. Commercial or fundraising. That's what it says. This also reaches PTA and PTO groups, this particular policy. In, in these cases, it says. So the last paragraph there, for purposes of this policy, local PTA and PTO groups and groups representing school system employees will be considered school groups and will be governed by the community's policy and staff solicitations. So they wouldn't be considered outside commercial organizations or fundraising. be considered So I think that's So we're all set on that. So, okay. so you you you're, so you're asking 
I mean, to send this to the principals for just for review, just to yeah, maybe, I mean, you, yeah, maybe just make them aware that yep. you know before you do anything, you just give it some thought. Even yeah. if it's something that you know people would be accepting, you know, like the American Heart Association or whatever, it yeah. still needs to, sure. to go. Um, just to follow the protocol, or the policy. Now, while he's taking those notes, it says discuss proposed school committee goals, Mike. Uh -huh. And that actually goes with the review school committee handbook. Because I went in there, I made sure this morning that everybody's titles, addresses, everything was correct. Uh -huh. And then I went through and looked at the subcommittees to date. They're, they're updated with the right people. Uh -huh. um, and the only part that needs to be updated is the last part, which is the school committee goals, which I don't think we wrote out. Um, we have not done. No, and so what I want to do is an action one for next time so that we have something to work with. Okay. Um, I know communication was one of them. Mm -hmm. um, and then was it budget was the other one? Communication. Budget. Yeah. yeah. Um, should we ask the budget committee if what they're working on and what their goals are for this year? Should we ask them to contribute? Yeah, so since we changed up sort of the way we've organized them, mm -hmm. maybe we change up the idea of school committee goals because, to yeah. be quite honest, I don't know that we've ever actually paid attention to them after we've talked about them. That's a good point. So maybe we just give each committee, or each subcommittee, sorry, a, either give them a particular goal or ask them for a yeah. goal. Like the budget one, I know that they're doing a lot of work. You know? Yeah. That's, they've done more work probably already than we've done in the last two years probably. Oh, I agree. So, and then we've got, so we've got that, we've got this committee, right? Mm -hmm. We can set a goal for ourselves. <coughs> uh, we've got the Success and Technology Committee, mm -hmm. which needs the goal. Uh, I think Bob's got some ideas on that as well. I think one of your overall goals should be, because you've got a lot of new members, like we already know. Yeah. And, and then, it's just a, um, I don't know how you would put it, just uh, maybe a, a review of uh, a review of job responsibilities, yeah. something like that. That's actually a really good And that could like be that. done, that could be done through, um, like the conference has those, like the conference I went to, you guys weren't there for, but they have those, but they're run by the MASC, so you could have um, Dorothy or somebody else run maybe a series of two or three, because you got I mean, you guys sort of trial by fire, but you know, you got Bob, who's got half a foot in, half a foot yes, in. Yeah, you know, because he works yeah, a lot. So, yeah. you know, and he's certainly really new. He's only been here since it's very new. Yeah. Megan, to a large degree, yeah. I think is is new. Um, Julie, you know, just and then to learn some of the things that they're not rules, but maybe. <coughs> Maybe you learn from experience, but an MESC member can say it. So there's a time where there's, you know, you're a public body, but not everything's public. Not everything's for public consumption all of the time. Here's some guidelines on that stuff. And, you know, so it takes some time to learn that. Right. But maybe someone giving them that guidelines will help with that. Um, you know, like so those kind of just general things I think would be good for because you. Everybody's new. I mean, you, yeah. you, you two are the veterans. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And so, and <laughs> Jess. You know, oh yeah, she's, no, she's yeah, she'll definitely direct. It's so hard when you're new to learn everything and to know where you're supposed to be. Now, Mike, do you think that maybe looking into January or something, we could have some sort of governance meeting, whether we include the MASC or whether you lead it or somebody else leads it, where we kind of come up with these. Like define what the roles are, or what, how do you envision this? Do you, how do you think, or should we just do this in policy subcommittee meetings? What do you want to think on that too? I mean, it's a lot to kind of digest all at once. There's, there's so much coming up. Really. Yeah, I know. With budget too, budget, budget season. You could always call the MASC and say, "Listen, this is yeah. one of our goals. We don't know if we're ready to if anything actionable, but like, what's your advice? Is this something?" That's we should bring it in on, yeah. or, and if we did bring it in, like what are the modules we're looking at here? Like, what are we I would rather, I would do something like that, but I would rather, <coughs> instead of having an actual meeting, we're going to have people take mm -hmm. the time and give them something, some sort of literature document 
online. They might have online modules. That's what I'm saying. They might That's have some online. Yeah. Something like, I'd, I'd rather do something like that than take another many people. Yeah. I agree. And, and if there are, if those are available, they'll know. They'll know just where to send you. And you can say that to them. Listen, we, we don't want to take more time out of out of committee members' lives. Maybe is there something online they can do? Like now another idea, if there isn't anything like that, I mean, could we still do a Zoom governance option if it was just an hour long or something? Yeah, we could. Because then we wouldn't have to leave our houses, leave our family, you know, you could sit there and do it. I mean, so just as a backup idea. <coughs> yeah, we could. But I would love it if we had a module that we could do at our own time, you know, kind of pull our ideas together and then... I, I think so, and uh, this, this subcommittee now covers So, yeah. so yep. the thing with, I think where we kind of hurt, hurt ourselves, shot ourselves in the foot, however you want to call it, is mm -hmm. we had a meeting the very next week. Yes. At, so less than a week after the actual election. So mm -hmm. there were new members. There wasn't a lot of time to talk to them, approach them, and get them familiar with what they need to do. Uh, this required charting the course. Yep. And, you know, they weren't even offering it. So, yeah, we need something. It's just, it's been, I think it's been so fast mm -hmm. since that happened. There's been so much going on. Uh, so that's something we can look at for when scheduling next time. Yeah, I you agree. Know. Well, and that's another thing that you bring up. I think we all discussed kind of like, wow, I never thought about the fact that it's the Tuesday, right? After the following Tuesday was another meeting. Yeah. And to be able to get everybody sworn in, by that meeting. Yeah, the swearing in, you know, Berlin, That's really I think hard. the office is only open like three hours a week or something, and they wouldn't even do it that week mm -hmm. because technically the election wasn't complete or, or certified mm -hmm. until all the mailing stuff was done, which was the following Saturday at noon. So that left a two hour window before the meeting. To yeah, get certified, which so. we were lucky to have everybody. So Jeff, if we were to ever move forward with trying to change that, was saying that the meeting would have to be two weeks later, or we only start, it would only be a month. That's the regionalization agreement, correct? Is the are the elections in the regionalization agreement, or is that a no, separate? The, the elections. We wouldn't be able to change the election timing of it. It would have to be the scheduling of committee meetings. That's what I yeah. meant. So that would be a yeah. policy on our right. part then. Yeah. Yeah. The timing okay. of it was part of the regional agreement, so we can't do anything with that. So instead, of, you know, we just have to be aware of the dates when they're coming up. Yeah. Instead of doing one week, you know, two weeks. Mm -hmm. Even not have a meeting that month, we have meeting, I don't know. Thanksgiving throws things off at that yeah. time, too, you know? Yeah, it's, it's a time crunch. All right. Yeah, All right, so that's good for goals. Yeah. All right, and then we have the, the timeline, uh, discuss the dissemination and timeline of agenda items. So I think one of the things that, um, we've been frustrated with is just the timing and, and you know some of us are to blame too of getting everything into the drive with enough time to read it um, we really do need the weekend especially for a really thick things to get through and to absorb I know sometimes I find myself on Tuesdays trying to read things that have just been put in there um, so we were talking about coming up with kind of like a timeline where if it isn't in by a certain time it has to be taken off the agenda or something along those lines um, and then how we're going to disseminate it, whether it's going to be like this, where you would get the information by clicking on the agenda and getting the information, if it would be a PDF form, which we have samples of here. Um, I don't know if anybody has any recommendations. You want to ask Christy? Sure. Christy, yeah. you have a couple minutes? Chrissy, we were discussing a timeline for putting documents into the drives for the school yeah. committee. And so they had, they were talking about having something that's, you know, 72 mm -hmm. business hours, which um, for Tuesday meeting documents would be in at the beginning of the yeah. work day on Thursday. Um, so what were the other questions you had? Yeah, so one of them was, we want, we were thinking about possibly giving people a deadline, because you can't put it in the drive unless you have it. Right. So giving people a deadline of, it has to be in your possession, 72 hours ahead of time, or however long so that you can get into the drive so that we can read it. Yep. Um, the other idea, and if it's not in there, then it has to be taken off the agenda, um, just to kind of get people to do things. And then the other idea was 
if we should keep the agenda like this with the information or if we should make it into a big PDF at the end so that if someone requests it, like online, like shoes bring different things, you can just go and click it so they're not always harassing you with emails, can I have the information? Um, um, honestly, that doesn't... It doesn't affect you? It doesn't happen. Okay. No, I've never, I never really get public requests for documents. Okay. Um, right now, I, I always requested that the leadership team submit items to me by Friday afternoon. That's just past practice for past mm -hmm. chair's request. Mm -hmm. Always happen, mm -hmm. but as soon as I get the material, it goes in the drive. So, I mean, I could do it in a matter of minutes. Yeah, it's just getting. I think it's more put back on whoever it is that's supposed to be responsible, whether it's a principal, or yeah. a budget, whatever it is, whoever yeah. it is. It's just more because if, if you're not getting it till Friday, we're not getting it till Friday. Another part of this is maybe a notification every time something goes in the drive, which is supposed to happen through Google automatically, but it doesn't always. Oh, um, yeah, I don't get enough data. Yeah, like if, if there you're... must be a setting. If there's a folder shared with you, there's supposed to be, anytime yeah. something's added to that folder, you're supposed to get a notification yeah. automatically. Yeah. But if that doesn't happen, so maybe Paul can look at that, I don't know. I can ask him. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, Thank you. Setting. It sounds like a setting. Yeah. yeah. I think it is. but. I don't know if individuals have to do it or oh, if it has to be done by whoever sets up the folder. I don't know how that works. But even on Friday, like Friday is not time because Friday, you know, you're not doing it during the day. Weekend comes, you probably, you know, we're not asking your principals or anybody to do anything over the weekend. So we're not asking to do this stuff. But that leaves Monday and Tuesday afternoon, which for some of the stuff is not enough time, especially for larger meetings with a lot of material oh, right. that now, um, the deadline for the, the the newsletter that you usually send out mm -hmm. is, like, is 10 a.m. On, on Friday, okay. correct? Yeah. So would like a noon on Friday be a good time for people to have to get it if we were to give people, or should we stick with a 10 so people are aware of the same deadline, do you think? No, I don't think, I think Friday's too late. I think Friday's too late? Yeah. If, if, if we're going to change the deadline for documentation, I would ask you to consider uh, maybe an earlier agenda setting meeting. Sure. Because that way they know exactly what That's they have to point. prepare. Yep. You I know, think, if we yeah. do them the week before, that you know kind of limits the time. Because I have to post the agenda yep. on Thursdays or Friday mornings, and so that kind of That's limits it to, to kind of so at least they know where they need to focus and they can. How how earlier. in the past how how much in advance have agendas been set? Um, I think going back to Cliffs. Chairmanship. Say that. Um, he did. We did met Tuesday morning the week before. Is that right? Yeah. Well, and then before. that was. They would set the agenda, so they would discuss the agenda. They come in, tell me. I always did the draft agenda mm -hmm. right after the. So that really meeting. only leaves people Wednesday and Thursday to put together whatever they have to put together. Yes. Right. So yeah, I can see how that. So I wonder if it would be like. But it's a working document, so, so even I, though you're meeting on Tuesday, right. she has a draft. Uh, I, she has a draft agenda when you sit down, yeah. which has yeah. most of the stuff. So like if, if it's three weeks in advance and I, there's something I want in there, I said, Chris, you can put this on the draft. And then when I meet with the chair, we discuss it. And, I, and, it, and she says, let's put that to the next meeting. We do. But most of the stuff is already on there when you get here. So yeah, which, I, is, which is another reason why it's confusing, why it can't be the drive by Thursday or Friday. You know? Well, then, we, yeah, but, I mean, we've had a lot of chairs since then. And so, <laughs> <True>. <laughs> you know, so. The musical chairs. <laughs> so typically, yeah, musical. That's really good. <laughs> That's a good one. So, it's been, it gets worked on. It gets worked on. And then, so, yeah, by, the saying, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so by the time you sit down, you're not talking about a draft and a yeah, you're not you're creating something. It's you're one more, or two right. things. You're you're more more it's just something it. that maybe came up that day yeah. or something like that or a I couple of days. I typically start the draft agenda the day after the meeting. So we have okay. a, you have a meeting. The November meeting the we had, meeting. I started the draft agenda the next day. So I carried over all the first reads. Um, we have that master schedule that mm -hmm. Cliff started years ago. Yeah. And I kind of go through that to see what, so what, topics what come up, yeah. those annual topics that come up every year. So or anything that I've heard. And when does that get sent out to the people who need to provide reports or documents? Or 
um, lately they don't get it until the agenda set. Yeah. They don't even know yeah, so that's, if they're reporting. Right, so that's the thing. Okay. So if we had a, a, like a schedule, like say this this meeting is principals, next meeting, you know, they, they can plan it, they could, they could plan better. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing. I think we had, and, and you know, the pandemic has changed some of this because we had a pretty strict schedule who attended what meeting. Yeah. And that makes it easy because, okay, the principal knows they're going to be there. If they have anything, they know it's going to be in. So, that, so we've had two years of that being kind of thrown off. So I would suggest we get back to that. You can revise that schedule that Cliff did way back and say, okay, Let's, let's see if we can stick to this. So that makes it easier, because then they know they're going to be there. You know? And it's easier to say, it's easier if they think they're going to be there to say, OK, you, you don't have to come. At least yeah, they're Yeah, because yeah, then they prepare yeah. for it. Yeah. You know? So why don't, we, uh, why don't we do this then? Do you want to see if this timeline will work with everybody? We'll agree to start setting the agendas earlier, maybe a day or two earlier. Um, maybe even the Friday before that Tuesday that you're talking about. So that's a week and a few days. Um, and then people can know when they leave Friday, okay, I've got to get this ready next week. And right. the whole week sure. to, you know. So are you suggesting that you would have your agenda meeting with Jeff that Friday? Yeah. So Friday before? Like a the, Friday morning. The Friday yeah, like morning. almost so, a week in So you, Friday morning, set the agenda. Yeah. Then the following week, the entire week goes by. Okay. And then the yep. week after that. Yeah, and then when would everything be due to be in the drive? Do you want it Thursday? I mean, how's, how's the Friday? Thursday? Yeah. Thursday? So Thursday at five? And Friday's or, Friday's too late. It's yeah, we, I agree. We, we know Friday's too late. It doesn't work. So should we do like Thursday at like noon or something? I'm just thinking. Well, Thursday at noon is when it should all be in the drive. Line. That's so what I was she's thinking. Need it before yeah. Thursday. That way she's not. Yeah, so Christy doesn't have to. Yeah. I don't want to give you enough time to get it right. in. Now. If we say yes. Thursday at 5 and I leave at 4, right. Then right. It, you know. so yeah, and then your Friday is slammed. Yes, so I I'm agree. saying the start of the day, Thursday. So if yeah. anybody wants to fix anything up Wednesday night, whatever they can, and then either email it off Wednesday night or Thursday morning when they come yeah. in, whatever. Yeah, but we'll, we will have Thursday to tweak the any agenda because mm -hmm. I won't post it. Until yeah, because then that gets everything. That's great. That's yeah, everything timeline. is yeah. known before you have to post it. So if anything has to come off, we don't have to worry about revising or anything. You're, now you also might want to put because you know it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And then number one, some exceptions. Are there exceptions for uh, what kind of emergencies are there? An exception for when something comes up. Oh right. Yeah, I don't think yeah. we're I don't think we're like hard coding. Yeah. Can't add anything. Okay. But this yeah. is just for for those known topics. Like right. You said, okay. You know? Or their monthly report. Yeah. 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 That they're yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like we're not saying like okay if you don't have anything by two weeks before it absolutely can't go on the agenda. Right. It's just, we know there's 90% of stuff that's going to happen. And it requires right. a report or whatever. And then there's that. There's Probably always something. That. Yeah. Right. Well, so then the, the last sticky situation would be, let's say Christy by noon or whatever, or Thursday at 10, doesn't have something from somebody. Whose job is it to chase it down and make sure it's in there? Uh, so why don't we do this? Uh, with email, you can set up automated emails to go out, automated reminders, just set up a monthly recurring reminder for like, I don't know, 9, 30, 10 a.m., whatever time, would be good. With like a reminder? Just to time. everybody, to, to every, everybody that could possibly be responsible, so you don't ever have to change it. And it just says something like, uh, if you have an agenda, agenda item, if you're supposed to be providing documentation If or you have a report due. Yeah, if yeah. you have to, please send it now. Yeah, right. and then if it's not in by a certain time, does it come off the agenda? Yes. I think so. I think it has to, otherwise we're back into this situation. No, I agree. No, I, I think agree. that's reasonable. That's a yeah. long time. And you can do, you know, you can set up, you can set it up once in Gmail and mm -hmm. just set it to recur. Do you feel like noon on Thursday would be a good time as a cutoff for you? I think so, because then I can have the afternoon to make sure. Perfect. You know, yeah. Yeah. So that works. Ducks. That will work. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Christine. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. That's a great idea with the recurring email too. Yeah. And this way it's not having one person have to just go in. If, if it, that email goes out as a reminder, yeah. it will jumpstart people to get it in. Because we know the meetings are the second Tuesday of every month, right? Yeah. So that means Most of the time. it's the first Thursday of every month. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Is that how it works? 
Yeah. Or uh, I guess some cases it could be like most of the time it's gonna be it. Okay. Do you have any issue with meeting Thursdays instead of Fridays? No. Okay. Yeah. And then, then the question becomes, so that then it goes down to the dissemination. Right now on the agenda, we have the, the links with policies and everything else that's on there that's in. So as long as the agenda is posted on the website for now, people still have access to all of these things. Because when I do, like, let's say policy KCD on this, anyone in the public can click on that and get that policy right away. Yeah. So the only thing, the only thing with that mm -hmm. is, what are you linking to? Are you linking to an existing document that's already out there? Unless or are you linking to something that has not been discussed yet? Because that's two different things. One has an issue. So none of these have been discussed in a meeting. I put them on here. Well, KC, KHA has, because that was the act. That link was to our actual policy. Document, right. right. But then again, if you go down to your number four, Mr. Chapman's timeline recommendations or so Wakefield Public Schools, those haven't been discussed yet. So here, here's the question, right? When does it become? So if we put a document out there that we're going to discuss at an upcoming public meeting, mm -hmm. and it's out there in the public, and people have the ability to comment on it, does that in any way influence what comes up in the public meeting? And is that okay or not okay? I would think it would be okay only because as long as we're not deliberating on it, they can then give us their comments, which we can then bring to the floor. I, I would think that like, one of the hard cutoffs you could have is that if you're voting on it, then it should be something they can get access to. You yeah. can have a discussion without that. Because it's yeah. voting on, most likely it's already been discussed at some point. Right, yeah, so if you're going you to vote on it, then they should have access mm -hmm. to it because your vote is like, so once you vote, it's there it is, it's, yeah. it's done. So, you shouldn't but, have to vote to know what's in it, right? The, the, yeah, so, but if it's just a discussion, if you're just doing a discussion, I don't necessarily think that the public has to have, I think it's good enough that they know that you discussed it. If, if it's not going to be actionable on part of the school committee, what, like, what would you give them that's... That, that's you, my you question, know, so right? What like, could you give them? You're giving them a document that we haven't even decided yeah, that Yeah, because we want no, sometimes right? you're just going to have a discussion just to have a discussion to see if anything has to be done. Yeah. So, I mean, at the point where it becomes actionable, then they should have a link so they okay. can see what the hell you're voting on, right? So are you saying that going forward in the agendas, if it's a voting one, because, so here's the deal. So if we do a first read. Or, or a first read. Or a first read, yes, because that's when they might want to, yeah. Anything that you're going to take action on, they so should see. So a first read and a policy. So anything that okay. we're going to take action on, we should put a link in. Mm -hmm. and so then if we're voting that night, they should be able to read it for you. Right, because if, you, if you're just having a discussion, mm -hmm. at some point, it either drops or there's action taken. If it drops, then, yeah. then it does. And you don't have anything to link to it. Yeah, this just goes back to that conversation we had with Christy before. When does it become public? Right. Documents? No, this I agree. It's just a work done. Yeah. yeah. So, so going forward in the agendas, unless it's in an actionable first read vote, it it won't get a link. But if it's one of those, it can have a link so they can see what it is, so they can speak to it. It's an actionable because we would want their input on it. Versus, so, say, like if someone's presenting a grant that we're voting on, or well, that's that's actionable too. Yeah, that's the. the yeah. 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 That, yeah, yeah. Like that. Because that's all public yeah. information. I mean, yeah. We have access to it. We can just, we can just put a link to it. So that's Be not that big. Because that was the whole point. That the, the point is trying to save all these requests coming in. And if there are, she says there isn't a lot. So. Yeah. Well, there was. Well, there have been a couple of requests from people that we make it available so that people can speak to it. Um, that's why we were just. That's why we, we put it on the agenda to discuss. Yeah. Um, but most yeah. of our requests come from out of state. Really. Some group points, you know, more salary, so they want all this, so they want all that. So, yeah. <laughs> all right. So then, for so for right now, that's where we're going to leave all of this. Correct? Is there anything else on, underneath number four that you feel like we need to discuss, or? No. So we got the timeline. Yeah. Um, can we just set that, or do we need to talk to the whole? I think we can just set that. That's right. not, yeah. Set it. Especially, I, I think the, the person most affected is Christy. And 
Well, you can set it, Mike, as the chair of the committee. Yeah, I just said it. Okay. I, I wrote, I wrote Boom, it. Mike sets it. Just set it. Okay. So you have to just let them know at the Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll, <laughs> you can't just set it in your head. Yeah. Set it and forget <laughs> it. <laughs> Right, rotisserie. Um, okay, so it looks like we're all done with that. And the last thing, because we, we want you to discuss the very last thing, which is the student handbook, is this Wakefield Public Schools class size policy. Yeah, we've got a couple comments about that. Yeah. So, the public policy of the school committee, this is for Wakefield, kindergarten maximum 22 children, grades 1 through 2, maximum 25, 3 through 4, 25, 5 through 8, uh, maximum ratio of 25 to 1 on a team, high school maximum 125 to 1 children to teacher. They must have a lot of uh, lecture. Um, no, that's, I think that takes into account your whole student load. So oh, if, you have, if you're a math teacher. If you're anybody, if you have yeah. five sections, yeah. from, you know, it's a maximum 20, 25 of that many kids students. in each. You know, so that's what we always look at. As a high school administrator, you look at okay, how many kids do you teach during the day total? That makes sense. So it always, it always comes yeah. up to about. So it's more subject based on class. Yeah, so it, they, you take your whole class load. So Mike Totman teaches five sections, you know, yeah. 10 kids, and we just count them up. So it usually comes up to be, be between high schools, like 110 to 120, something like that. So they set this a teacher can't have more than a. 125. So you have to think about 125 kids. That's how many kids I grade. Mm -hmm. That's how many kids mm -hmm. I'm responsible for. That's, so that's what that, that's got to be the right. That makes sense because it's yeah. funny. I remember when we used to get our class list, everybody used to be like, how many kids do you have? Yeah, how yeah. many kids do yeah, you right. have? That's what that how is. many boys do you have? How so many girls do you have? So you look at that have? number, yeah. it looks crazy, but that's. No, but that makes sense because I it, never thought of high school. Huh? These are reasonable yeah. maximums. I mean, because there's no set. The only, the only, the only conditions where they have like a set is, is like in a shop. And mm -hmm. it goes by square footage. Like you have to have a certain amount of square footage because yeah. there's machines involved. Oh, well, that makes and sense. That, there might actually be something for a, a, a dedicated science lab too. But other than that, you know, these are these are reasonable maximums. I think when you say maximum, we try to stay way under these numbers, mm -hmm. um, and that's because that's what the community has asked for a number of times. That. <coughs> we maintain small classes. So small class sizes, uh, and you know, maybe high teens. And and really, you know, there's a study that's been done that um, there's not a lot of difference in, in value between like a class of 12 versus 16, something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. It's only at the upper end that you, you start really having, but like a class of 25, 26 yeah. kids, then you start having an issue. But between like 10 or 12 and 16 or 17, there's not much value added by having a smaller class size. Matter of fact, you lose, because now that's what you want to maintain. You're going to hire another teacher. Right. And there's not a significant difference. Matter of fact, at the lower grades, it makes it more difficult to group kids and to do centers and stuff like that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, kids yeah, to do yeah, yeah. Two kids yeah. per yeah. Yeah. five kids. Yeah, that's not fun. Kids. Yeah, so. Yeah. It's not effective. Yeah. So the, these are, I mean, uh, those are the only thing I would ask here is, so this says, these numbers, I think, we have to obviously tailor them to us because it's going to be different at BES than it is at BMS, right? Because it's just a bigger building. No, but I would say, but there's, it's a bigger building, but it's, it's, same know, it's got more class teachers, so I think the student to student ratio should be the same. So I know when John talked to us uh, a few months ago now, he said 18 was the preferred size there. Mm -hmm. Some are at 20, 23. Uh, what was the number? There's one at 20. Yeah, right. So, like you said, at the bigger class sizes, it starts to get an issue. At 23, but then if you add a third class, then you've got what, class of 12 now. Yeah, but you know, you're going to hit that point where, like, all of a sudden you're at 26 and you're like, oh, this is too big. And then you hire another teacher, you're at 13. Right. right. So you start all over again. But you have to do that, or else the next year you're at 30. Right. Or maybe, right. I, I think one of these ideas was, uh, not necessarily making a separate class, but adding a mandatory aid or professional or something yeah. to it. Right. You know, so you don't necessarily have to have, you have 25 kids, you don't all of a sudden have to have a third class with 12 each, but you've got to give the teachers some help. 
Yeah, and if there's space, if it, and our classrooms are normal 800, 80, 900 square feet. They're normal class sizes, not like we converted the closet or something right. like that. So they're normal class sizes. And that's what we try to do. So I mean, we're down on, on our reads and powers, and they're difficult to get. You know, as you know, we, mm -hmm. we, we budgeted for two that are still trying to hire at, at um, PES. Um, so I think you know that's that's the other solution until size becomes a problem. You know. So. So I like the last two things on this. The one is the superintendent or his designee may, under their own authority, admit up to two students above the policy if he or she deems appropriate. And then, however, the committee recognizes these permits may not be achievable for any given year. In all cases, it may authorize a waiver, so there is some there is flexibility. flexibility. My question would be: Would this be a good question? I don't know. I'm not sure how you decide this. As a survey, like, what do you feel is the appropriate class size, or do we go by studies, or how do we, if we were to come up with something similar to this, how would we justify a number? Because right now we could say, oh, John thinks 18 or 23 would be a great number. They feel well, kind of arbitrary. I, I don't know. I think that's where the. The, the personalized piece comes in. So, you know, what you know, what passes for a big class in an urban setting will be different. Right. So I think yes. you know you say it depends on what, what tends to work. Right. You know, someone like John, he's been in the building, so yeah. we'll know what works and what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Sally's been in the building. She'll know like what works. It's because some classes you can have a lot of kids. It's not gonna you know, like a survey class, but if it's a class where you're gonna do some more specific detailed stuff. Maybe you want smaller class sizes. So I think that's, we might like to start with the principals and the main principals and the teachers and see what they're so we should ask doable. So we should ask them to take a look at this, see what they think might be appropriate yeah. for us. Yeah, I mean, we could. And then when it comes to, you know, the difference between making a new classroom or just getting additional help in there, I know you said you're having trouble hiring people now. There's also, you know, Adam wanted to bring up increasing pay in those positions. Is that a possibility? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think they, it is. Or is the, or is the, is the yeah, pay the whole, is the pay the barrier, or is it? No, we did, a, we, did a, um, we did a comparison study that Paris approached us uh, a couple of years ago and asked us to look at them. We're comparable. Um, You're comparable a couple of years ago or now? No, we're comparable now. But if, you, if you're saying, like, well, maybe we should pay him a little more, I don't think it's going to hurt. I don't think it's going to no, hurt. It would never hurt. Right. <laughs> never hurt. Um, I don't think. People, Is it the magic bullet that gets us? I don't think so. I mean, if we were significantly below, I would say maybe. But, you know, there's a lot of other advantages to come in here and maybe go into another district. Right. Um, so it's not that we're significantly below. I don't think, like I said, I don't think it ever hurts. Um, you know, it doesn't, but I, I don't think if you increased it by five bucks an hour, someone's going to say, now I'll go. I think it's five dollars an hour more. Depends on what, what, we're, the, on what we're at for pay, though. <laughs> what's it right now? What's the rate? 20, let's see, we just, we just checked the what? lesson. The, the power rate, Yeah. because we have a grid. I mean, 20, anything, oh, you know, yeah, five bucks is a decent. Yeah. You just Are you kidding? Yeah, no, we were just looking at this yesterday. Timing. Yeah. So they start at step one, they start at 21 bucks an hour. And they go up to step 10, which is 25, 21 an hour. That's step 10? That's 10 years in? That's step 10, yeah. You said 21 is the start? 21 is the start. So we went up to 26 to 30. Instead of 21 to 25, 26 to 30, you think that would change anything? I don't think that would change anything. Well, it might. Like I said, I don't think it's going to hurt. What's yeah. that? Well, you know what it might help? It might help keep them keeping the ones you have. That's what I was okay. thinking. You know, it might, it might I mean, help. that's just as important sometimes. Well, knowing that someone who's just starting is making 425 less than me after 10 years is a huge job, don't you think? I mean, like, like a, I mean, a small, like, Maybe, really we, maybe we increase the upper levels and then do some sort of uh, retention bonus or something mm -hmm. at the lower levels. That might be worth looking into. 
I, I think it's worth looking at. I mean, it has come up a couple times. We've done the regular studies of it, but, you know, um, so who would be the action person to discuss that? Would that be the budget committee? Would that be? Why don't, so why don't we start? With the, why don't we start with the principals, like you suggested? Okay. Right. See if. So. Uh, and who would do that? Is, is Jeff going to reach out to them, or? Yeah. 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 So you can ask them about class size and. Yeah. So. Um, I'm going to put it in my, in my minutes too. Yeah, I mean, just because we're comparable doesn't mean we're good. Right, you know, right, I mean, right. Come right. That's my yeah. favorite. I mean, my favorite saying, Jeff. Just because that's the way we've always done it doesn't mean it's the good way to do it. Well, well I know it's come up, and it's come up this year with um, a couple of the powers. Um, and you know, when when everything's running smooth, I mean, it's not an issue. But all of a sudden, there's like the workload increases, and the powers say, "I'm doing all this for." Oh, I can go to Walmart right. and be yeah. a, a greeter for, right. you know. So yeah, no, and I and I think you know a lot of those teachers depend on those paras. I mean, they're they're essential, and you know, and I I, I know a lot of the paras. They're they're very hardworking um, people who are, who are real. I just I'm shocked that they're there are, there are teachers that are paras right now that we're so lucky to have. I would want to keep so, those people. What? So. I'm gonna just, just just so I want to make sure. But I'm gonna kind of send this to the principal, <coughs> and we'll send the power pay schedule along. For yeah. Great. And yeah. And basically ask. Um, Are these numbers appropriate for us? Should we adjust them? What's the best way? To well, well, maybe you know, do we, do, we, do we think our retention will be better? Mm -hmm. okay. And then the school committee can decide if they want to make a, um, a, a an increase. And what we can do is once we, once the principal said, you know, maybe, oh, you know, four dollars an hour would be better. Or they might know a place that, like, okay, they pay this. Right? We do just a Bob and I did just a general survey, um, and then if that's the case, we can figure out based on the amount of powers we have now what that increase would cost the district. So we can we can take a, a quick look at that. So let me just stop by saying this. I think that's great. Right. Um, what? Uh, can I just ask for my own information? What's the deciding factor to put an aid or a power professional in the room? Well, if it's uh, it's two things. If there's if there is a special education one, it's usually required by that. Um, if not, it's just if the load of the classroom, like if a teacher has just challenging kids that you, and you can have challenges. So not necessarily number of kids. It could be, yeah. That, I mean that could be a fact of the if you, so, see okay. that's the other thing. Like sometimes you don't know. Like you could get Ace has had this happen. Um, you know you think what your class size is. You get seven kids moved in. That changes. You're already thinking, okay, maybe I, this is so you're already thinking it's gonna be, you know, Mr. Tom is gonna have a big class. And now you get six more kids, right? And, and 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 you get four, and the other teacher gets two. Like, okay, that's that's going to be too much. Maybe you're a new teacher, so you know. Then the principal says, "No, I'm, I should get a power for that for that class." I was thinking about doing it anyway. Well, let me move one over to Mr. Thomas' class because he's new and he needs the extra help. So a lot of it is just if you know the class is going to be really big, then it's a no-brainer. But a lot of times it's. Just the principal. Just the you, you know, you got to rely on the principal making a like experience a, a, feel. A, yeah, things. like a good call on the run, like you know, and and not getting into the year and like, okay, you knew this was going to happen. Why didn't you ask for a power? Like, so that, that's the, what you don't want. <laughs> so <laughs> it happens because sometimes you just and then so typically get, like, what percentage of classrooms have one in a given year? Majority, a handful. Not uh, enough, not as much, what, what is it? My opinion, not enough. I think yeah. always having a, a, an extra adult in that room, and when, when we when we break here, I'll give you a good example of that, but always having somebody, another person in there can help. 
So what I'm kind and of driving at is... And they're money. I mean, you, you saw the price on it. Well, I mean, what I'm kind of driving at is, what well, if we just make it mandatory to have one every room? And then, based on this policy, if we take another one, in every room in every single classroom? Yeah. Um, in the elementary what, school? What kind, of, what kind of hit would that be? I don't know. It's a good question. Huh? That's like, if the majority of them had them, it probably wouldn't be much. But if you only have three classrooms with them, then yeah, it's going to be a bigger hit. But you don't know that right now. Yeah. No, and, and we always, again, as you, as you know, we try to present something that was lean and that. So, but to have an extra, to have an extra power in there, um, yeah. Like just across the board, every room gets one, regardless. And then if you were required to have one for special ed, well, that, yeah, then yeah, that's, yeah. that's another one. Okay, and if you have an exceptionally tough room, that's another one, you know? Yeah. But what's really nice about that is I'm thinking about how far we've fallen because of all the COVID protocols. Exactly. You could have that pair of working one-on-one -on -one with the students that need the extra help or that yeah, have we have, you know, we have math coaches, we have literacy coaches, they're one person going down to all the rooms trying yeah, to Yeah, I mean, it's, well, and they're not sitting with necessarily those specific kids, they're moving around, yeah. seeing where the needs are, which would be great. I mean, if, well, if we can afford it. Well, yeah. Those coaches work with the parents, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, they, mm -hmm. they don't just work That's with the teachers. That's true. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, we, we don't want, I mean, we don't want babysitting, we want someone who's doing something productive right. with kids, and so, um, yeah, it's a, it's, so let, let's, let's start with this, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. then, you know, Kate, that's a good, well, we're going to argue with you on that one, that's for sure. Well, we'll see. But you know, it's the personnel thing. It goes back to that. It's the, the argument that I made before that there's not necessarily, when you start looking around and you start talking to other administrators, it's not that there's a shortage of teaching. It's that people realize that the only way out of this thing now is to have additional staff. Even more important than technology, that you need staff helping kids because that you know, that they, because they, they, it's all of the instructional stuff plus all of the social emotional stuff, all sitting there in front of you now. So you need some, you need bodies in there, you yeah. need adults in there who can deal with that stuff and and teach now. So where well, before you didn't have as as you take the social emotional stuff out, you mean you only need one person because you you're not dealing with a kid who's melting down. Right. You know, so now that's we're right. starting to see point. more and more of that, and that's in this district. Some of the other districts, even even more. So but there's a shortage because they get hired. We're not training less of them. Yeah. You know, people still are interested in education. Well, that's why I, I know the plan calls for targeted additional ones. But yeah, what I'm suggesting is just make it across the board. Right. Yeah. Across what everybody gets. Yeah. It, regardless, Equity. every room. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Every room, and then. Then you do this analysis and decide if it's exceptionally more in this particular year. Mm -hmm. Give them so now there would be three people in case. But starting with that, yeah, let's start. Let's get a handle on that and see what that does. All right. So before I adjourn, because we did the last one, um, is there anything that needs to be on our next one that you can think of at this moment in time? Um, Next one will be probably January, right? I think so, yeah. All right, so let's see if we can have a response on that yep. by January. Yep. Sounds good. And we can try to figure out a date there. Probably mid to January. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. I'd like to adjourn our policy meeting. <laughs>